Today, we're going to be looking at endgames that will blow your mind. There's going to be five of them. They're going to go in ascending rank of difficulty, of craziness. And yeah, thank you guys for almost 400 subs. That's wild to me. I'm at the point where I would upload these videos even if they got zero views. That is how much I enjoy doing this. But it is nice to see, and I appreciate your guys' time. But yeah, this is also my second time recording this video because I cut off one of the files and I, I just uploaded it. I was like, oh my goodness, that's not a square. That's a rectangle. So luckily I love chess though, so I have no problem re-recording. But yes, end games. I was going to look at a Fisher game today, as always. We're going to get to it. It's a crazy pawn structure end game. But winning the one game is important. It's like when you go out with your friends and you know those people, it could be you, it could be your friends that can't close for the life of them. Well, study your end games. Winning the one game will lead to a better life. So, puzzle number one. No five minute intro today. This position is drawn. It is also white to move. Let's get a grasp on it. Black is going that way. White is going that way. Okay, so we're closer to promoting, but we can't just push the pawn because then they stop us from promoting. And then, are you going to catch this pawn? I would bet any amount of money that you will not. So what do we do? You can't just go this way. You can't chase the pawn like that because they're going to promote. So you have to go king e7. Okay, what's the point of this? So they're obviously going to push. Again, we can't catch the pawn. So we're going to go king d6. Start thinking. Why are we doing this? Pawn to g4. Now you might be like, oh, easy. I'm going to go king c5 and their bishop can't stop my pawn. However, this is losing because in this position, they'll push the pawn. And what's the problem? The problem is that they open up another diagonal. So there are two diagonals to the queening square on e8. So what you have to recognize, when their pawn is on g4, you have to push. What this does is it stops them from being able to push because we will promote first and forces them to go b5. You go king c5. If they push, you're just in time. You will make a queen. That will be a draw. So what if they defend the bishop or what if they move the bishop? Same exact thing. Say they move it. Well, look at the geometry. Fascinating. Now that the board is actually a square, you guys can see the first rank. Making sure. Yes, you can. Good stuff. The king can step into the queening box. And if the king can step into the queening box, you know it is in time to stop the pawn. And stop the pawn it does. It's going to be a draw because we're going to lose that pawn. But we're going to win this one. That's what we wanted. So, puzzle number one. This is fascinating. The only way you could catch the pawn is by this route. And look at that. I hated geometry when I took it in school. I like math with numbers, but on the chessboard, I don't mind it. Okay, stepping it up a notch in difficulty. White to move. White is winning. Well, our knight is being attacked. It can't really move except for going to f8. King could come here and defend it, so let's look at that one first. That looks logical. The problem with this is, okay, yes, if you take, you are winning. We will discuss opposition throughout the video. Right now, you're losing because king to e6, king g7, you defend the pawn. Or white is winning, sorry, rather. Uh, you, re you reach this winning king and pawn endgame. What I meant was this is not forced. It's not forced. They can go king e6 first, and now you're screwed. Right, what do you do? If you move the knight, you lose the pawn. You couldn't go king g7 and be like, hey, I'm guarding the pawn. But then they take your knight, you take, and now they're in the winning king and pawn endgame. So, bad stuff. Yeah, they would need to chuck the pawn and win this. It's a draw, but you're not winning. That's what I mean by you're losing. So, what do we do? I'll slow down. Well, the only winning move is knight f8. And you might reach this by process of elimination, but understanding it and finding it Two different things. So, logically, they're going to go king e8. If they don't go king e8, you're just winning because you trap their bishop, you defend the knight. Good stuff. So, knight f8, king e8. Okay. Well, we can't really lose the knight, right? If we lose the knight, uh, we lose the game. Depends which way you lose the knight, though. If you go king h6, you also lose the game because after they take, you're forced back, and then they can make progress. So they're going to win this seven days of the week. But if you go king h5, it's a different story. See, because 
If they go away, the less logical move, you get that Zooks one position where you shoulder them away. You win the bishop. You still have a knight. You're winning. So what if they take the knight? Well, the difference is you lost a tempo because when they take, they step on a landmine. So you go forward. If they, give, if they give up their bishop, you shoulder them out. You shoulder them away from their pawn. And the other option is they move away. King g7. They lose this. Zooks one. Famous position. So this is fascinating. You had to give up the knight and lose a tempo to win the game. Crazy stuff. Puzzle number three. Moving up in difficulty. After this one, we're going to discuss opposition and rook endgames. Pawn and rook endgames. So let's digest this. What's going on? Okay, so white is going up, black's going down. Always good to orientate yourself. Believe me, I've looked at endgame positions thinking the wrong way. Tragic. Okay, so white's king cannot move. White's knight cannot move. And black's king is in the queening box. So by process of elimination, I think the first move is easy, right? You can't go d4. They just take and they're going to take everything. So what do we do? b5, not so hard to understand. You guard the pawn. You put the rook in a cage. Fine. They're going to go king f3 to get closer to your pawn. Your literal only legal move is, other than knight c8, is pawn to d4. You try to run the pawn. But they're in time. You see, now if you push and they take, how are you going to win this? Your only move is here. They take the pawn. They win the game. So, pause the video. Try to find it. What do you do in this position? Well, you're either a genius or you know the rules of the game. Because the only other legal move is knight to c8. So hopefully you chose this move and then worked it out from here. Their rook is under attack. They cannot take the pawn because you take the rook and then you just promote too fast but i mean logically they're going to take the pawn how are we winning knight d6 check if the king takes the pawn we go knight here this is just a winning king and pawn end game but they're not going to do that they're going to take the knight right free knight but this pawn on d4 is so important because it cuts off the entrance to the c file and the rook cannot stop the pawn how crazy is that so at the end of the day, you queen. I can make a separate video as to how to win queen and king versus king and rook. Magnus is the best at defending them, at winning them. He's a G. We all know that. He's a G. But yeah, hard to win against a computer. But once you know it, you know it. You get closer to them, and then they run out of moves, and you win. That's, that's the easy way of saying it. So this one, fascinating. Now let's get into opposition. Distant opposition. I made another video on opposition a while ago. So this is distant opposition. Okay. So the board is a square. That makes opposition pretty nice to learn, I think. I love opposition. Uh, so, okay, this is the general rule of thumb. If there's an even number of squares between the king, you want it to be your move. Then you have the opposition. So even number, our move, good for us. That is the same thing as saying odd number of squares, your opponent's move, good for you. So you can think of it in the positive, you can think of it in the negative. Like I said, I'm an optimist, so I think of it in the positive. I'm not going to say, we'll get into what I was going to say. So what to do here? Well, you can rule out king to d2 because even number of squares, black to move, good for black. Right? They come here. If you go down, you win the, they win the pawn. If you go up, they shoulder you out. Right? That's what opposition is. It's around a focal point. Opposition, it works because it's a square, but it has to be around a focal point. The relation between the kings you always need to think about, but the relation only matters if it's around a specific point that matters. You can only measure the importance of two figures or the distance if there's a point that matters. Otherwise, opposition around what? I'm just going to stay in the same place. Opposition around a point. And see, yeah, here you would reach a losing king and pawn endgame. So what do we do? Well, you said odd number of squares, their move, good for me, right? Well, around a focal point. The focal point is the C file. They need to win the C pawn to win the game. So you need to allow them to get to the B file to try to win the C file and then opposition around that point. The problem is here, they can shoulder you out, right? They go up. 
If you go here, same same exact thing. It's always going to transpose. You go up, they shoulder you out. You go down, they win the pawn. So same exact position as from before. So what do we do? Distant opposition. King to e2, gangster. Odd number of squares. Black to move, good for white. I like to think of it as they need to win the C pawn, so they need to get to the C pawn. And in order to get to the C pawn, they need to cross the B file. So when they cross the B file, I want to be on the E file because it'll be my move and there's an even number of squares so I know the opposition. So I like to take a screenshot position in my head and think of it from that point. Most people like to think of it at face value on the board. I don't know, I'm strange. But whatever works for you, you can think in positives, you could be pessimistic, think in negatives, you could be a realist and look at it at face value. You could do it anyway, as long as you understand it. And if you're not understanding what I'm saying, if it sounds like word vomit, re-listen to this, or if my voice is annoying, read it and reread it. You really need to digest it. It's not like openings. You can't skim it. You can't look at different games, just blah, blah, blah. You need to read it, digest it, internalize it, memorize it. You, you just, you need to, it's so simple. That's the thing about endgames. They're so simple, but there's so many rules and you need to know when to apply them. But if you understand them, you're going to look like a G. You're going to be playing all these engine moves, throwing your opponents off. They're going to be like, how does this guy know this? Little do they know it's just even or odd. That's crazy. Endgames are great. Okay, so odd number of squares, their move good for us. Even number of squares, our move good for us. They step into it, right? Even number of squares, our move good for us. You step into it. The difference now is when you're next to the pawn, it's their move. So they could never shoulder you away, right? You just follow them. And the, the craziest part is you just mimic them. Like the only move that's hard is the first move. Other than that, you just mimic them and you see they could never make progress. That's why you see all these strange moves and you're like, how do they know this? They just needed to know the first move. So king e2, they could never shoulder you away from the pawn. They could never win. That is a draw. Fascinating. And if they push the pawn, both sides, you know, promote. So, hope this one made sense. Now, the hardest one. All right, you might be like, what do you mean? This is just a king and a rook endgame. What if I told you you could only move your rook once to checkmate them? If you move it more than once, you lose the puzzle. So, the only rook move you can make has to be checkmate. How do we do that? Well, first things first. One, two, three, four, five, six. Even number of squares between the king. Our move, good for us. Good. Also, think about it. It's a square, so that what can work vertically can work horizontally, can work diagonally. There's always a connection uh, since it's a square. So that's good. You know, chess would suck if the board was a rectangle or a circle. Geometry, uh, pi, that would be weird geometry. So um, what do we do? Well, we don't move a rook because then we lose the puzzle. We don't mate them. Can't mate them here in one move. So we go king a2. Stepping into the opposition, right? Odd number of squares, black to move, good for us. However, what's the focal point? Hard to see a focal point because there's no pawn, there's no important square. We just know we need to win the win with a mate once with the rook. So what they're gonna be, they're, what they're gonna do is they're gonna be smart about it. They're not gonna go down because if they go down, even number of squares are moved. They're just gifting us the opposition, right? If they go diagonally, we go here. Odd number of squares, they're moved. If they go down, we go up always opposing them. So they're going to go king to b8. Now we cannot go king b3 or king a3 because that gives them the opposition, right? If we go king b3, one, two, three, four, black to move, good for black. So what are we going to do? We're going to go king b2. Now again, if they step up, then we could step up. So they're not going to step up. Now we step out, right? When they're on the a file, we can go to the c file. Reason being is if we're on the c file, they're on the a file, we can make them in one move if their king opposes ours. So this buys us time. Now what are they going to do? They're not going to go to B8, because if they go to B8, then we can go to the fourth rank, odd number, their move, good for us. So they're going to go to the seventh rank, right? And they're not going to go to the A file, because then we can stay on the C file and just gain time. King B3, again, do not go to the fourth rank when there's an even number of squares, and then it's their move, because then they have the opposition. So we stay on the third rank. If they go up, we go up. That's easy. They go here, we go here. That's easy. So king a7, king c4. When they go on the a file, we can make progress on the c file. Now what? If they go king a6, it is easy again. 
because we go king c5, we gain time. If here, this is what I meant, horizontal opposition, square, geometry, checkmate in one move. And if they go back, we just, we're bought time, right? If here, 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 checkmate. Uh, if here, you get the memo. If here, here, same thing. So back to where we were, king b8, king b4, odd number of squares, their move good for us. King a8, king c5, when their king's on the a file, we use the c file. King b7, king b5, king a7, king c6, zooks one. They go down, mate. If they go here, mate. And if they go here, king b6, king a8, rook c8, checkmate. So I hope these were as crazy as you expected. I got crazier ones. I have positions where grandmasters resigned in winning positions. So imagine being a grandmaster resigning in a winning position thinking you're lost. So I'm going to do these alongside the old school games. I think it's fun to mix it up. I hope you guys stuck with me. End games are so important. I know I was joking about them in the beginning, but they're just the most neglected part of the game. And they're so important. Like chess is a game about understanding. Why memorize everything? That just ruins the beauty of the game. It ruins everything about the game. This is fun. It's like Sudoku, little riddles. Um, so we're going to get to the Fisher game. It's a Fisher game where he chose to get double isolated pawns, horrible pawn structure, and he was winning. So his understanding of the game, it was just great. I mean, he's the best, as you know. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you guys for your time. Thank you for watching and for everything. Have a great day. See you next time.